In this lecture, we'll talk about something called correspondence principle. Now, in the last lecture, we talked about um, some comparison between classical and quantum mechanics. We also talked about uncertainty principle, which uh, told us that um, we cannot measure uh, some, uh, we cannot measure all, or uh, we cannot obtain all the information from a system simultaneously. Like uh, in the last class, we 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 were observing that to we cannot measure the time as well as the frequency. Um, of a certain data point which belonged to a normal distribution with c complete precision, there was always some uncertainty in the time involved in uh, at which the data point arrived and the frequency which it belonged to. Uh, so there's always some uncertainty in um, uh, some of the variables, um, which and these things will actually become even more clear and quantitative as we'll proceed. But for now, let's assume, let's let's just say that we cannot measure or uh, ex ex obtain all the information from a system precisely. That's like a symbol, like a literature statement. And one of the consequence of this statement is that now. Uh, because there is uncertainty in the system, the measurable variables of the system no more remain continuous. Uh, so, like for example, if, if we have a spring mass system, the spring mass system, which has let's say mass m, has some angular frequency omega, then the energy of the system is given as m omega square a square over 2. Now we see that the system, the energy actually depends on the omega, m and a continuously. There's no break uh, for energy. Energy is sort of a continuous function of m, omega and a. But if we talk about quantum mechanical harmonic oscillator, which we'll talk later in details, the energy is given as <coughs> Here, n is called the quantum number. And uh, h bar is something which is called reduced Planck's constant. We don't, let's not worry about omega right now, but we know that this is angular frequency. How this is obtained is a different matter. Now, according to correspondence principle, um, if n now just just to reiterate this explanation here, we see here that for n equals zero, energy is h bar omega two. For n equals one, energy is three over two h bar omega, and so on. So energy you see does not appear continuously, but is sort of quantized. It appears in states. <clears throat> okay, coming back to correspondence principle, which tells that if n tends to a large number, a large number, so if quantum number is very large, then let's call this E classical and let's call this EQM. Then EQM tends to EC. And this is not only true for energy, it is actually true for any measurable, any uh, measurable that can be measured like one, uh, angular momentum or momentum. And the expression here goes to the expression here. For example, if we equate the two equations, which means n plus half h bar omega equals m omega square a square over 2, this gives us that n should be equal to m omega square m omega a square 2 h bar it's called h bar reduce Planck's constant minus half for this to hold true okay if we pick up some standard values of m, which is the let's say mass, and let's say let's do a kilogram, or let's take some standard values of um, 
amplitude, let's say a meter or I don't know 10 centimeters, some standard values of omega um, which we see in real day to day life, we'll see that n actually is of the order of 10 to the power 33. Now this is a very large number. So what this is actually just trying to say that for a very 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 large n the expression derived in quantum mechanics uh, actually are similar to what we obtain for classical mechanics which means a quantum mechanical system behaves like a classical mechanical system classical mechanics system for a very large value of n and this is called the correspondence principle. Now, the, uh, if you th think a little deeply, you can actually um, sort of uh, reconcile uh, what we talked about in the last lecture and uh, what we are talking right now, which is in a way um, telling that if you have a normal distribution and uh, which has some standard deviation, some mu, then for classical system it, it was just sigma and mu that mattered we just wanted some information for a quantum mechanical system we actually wanted to see in detail each of the these data point but let's say if you have a data point that is very 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 strong and this this is very 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 strong data point then we'll see or actually uh, we'll see that uh, the information given by uh, the integrate nature of this particular pixel and uh, the overall nature of this whole system are just the same. Well, which simply means that this thing is so strong that it simply is behaving as, as the dominant state. Uh, so you call it quantum mechanics or you call it classical mechanics, it doesn't really make much of a difference. So basically correspondence principle is saying the quantum mechanical nature is becomes a, a classical uh, uh, mechanics uh, nature for a very very large value of the quantum number n.